As the movie starts we are informed that crimes in America were increasing day by day. These offenses have led to an increase in the number of prisoners. Due to this situation, the government has launched a campaign for private prisons. In response to the rising crime rate in America, several private prisons were established. As crime increased, so did the prison population and the detainees were transported to private jails. An illegal race was held at a prison called Terminal Island. The race included dangerous customized vehicles and they were equipped with several weapons. These automobiles were driven by inmates and the one who wins all the rounds of the race is liberated from confinement. In this way, they were making a lot of money as they were streaming live. This race was very popular among the audience. Terminal Island's jail is shown when the story begins. We see a man nicknamed Frankenstein in the race performing his last round and he seems to be winning. During the race, he covers his face with a mask and when he was about to win the race, something strange happens. It is discovered that Frankenstein's weapons have been turned off and he is pursued by his rival, Machine Gun Joe. Cassie, his navigator, reports that all of his defense mechanisms have failed. Frankenstein refuses to let Joe finish ahead of him despite her objections. Just as Joe was about to destroy the car as it crosses the finish line, Cassie ejects herself out of the vehicle. In the next scene, we see a man named Jensen who works in a steel mill. Everything was going perfectly, but suddenly cops arrived there as the mill was running illegally. However, people are forced to do such work due to unemployment. The police start beating everyone. There we see a tussle between the workers of the mill and the police. Gradually, everyone flees from there. Jensen also comes to his home and we see him very happy with his family which includes his wife Susie and a newborn daughter Piper. Later, a masked assailant knocks him unconscious. Jensen wakes up with a bloodied knife in his hand and Susie dead nearby. Policemen storm into his home and arrest him. He is sentenced to life imprisonment, while Piper is placed in foster care. Six months later Jensen is brought to the Terminal Island Jail but some people didn't like the presence of Jensen and they were planning to kill him. They attack Jensen while he was eating. The guards arrive and separate them. The jail's warden discovers the fight and calls Jensen into her cabin. She says to Jensen you don't know with whom you had a brawl. They are very dangerous and can kill you anytime. The warden sees Jensen's file and discovers Jensen as a good driver and also a capable racer. Now the warden tells Jensen about the race. She says we will release the prisoner who wins this race. Additionally, she also tells Jensen about Frankenstein. He used to drive by wearing a face mask as his face was burned. The people haven't seen his face till now. But people like his performance a lot. Now he is dead and she wants him to participate in the race bearing his name Frankenstein. But Jensen refuses. The warden tells him, that if he stays in jail, his opponents will tease him. She assures Jensen that he will be released if he wins the race. Hearing this, Jensen says yes. The warden says the rest of the information will be given to you by the coach. She sends him to the coach. The coach informs Jensen about the race. In this race, anyone can kill anyone and the duration of the race is three days. The racers have many weapons. Jensen also has to take care of his car speed. He will win the race if he remains alive till the third day. Jensen returns to jail after meeting the coach. He notices some people wearing tracking devices on their hands. He asks the coach, why there is a tracking device on their hands? Suddenly, Jensen remembers the man who killed his wife was also wearing the same tracking device. The scene shifts to the racing day. The warden gives Jensen the mask of Frankenstein. They all were sent in their cars. Meanwhile, a bus arrives and many girls come out from it. They are also prisoners and were also participating in the race as navigators to the drivers. We see a girl named Cassie, who is the navigator of Frankenstein before his death. She sits in Jensen's car and hears his voice. She immediately discovers that he is not Frankenstein. The race starts and it gets broadcasted everywhere. The TRP was high, as it had been previously. Jensen is seen driving his car dangerously. The audience was considering him Frankenstein. Likewise, 
Jensen's car was moving in the number one position. Sensing defeat, Joe slams Jensen with his car. Cassie advises him that if the speed of his car is maintained the same, then he will get many weapons along with gasoline. We also see some death traps on the track. If any vehicle comes into contact with those spots, then the vehicle driver gets killed immediately. On the other hand, Jensen is pursued by his rival mortally. In the end, Jensen comes again at number one while escaping the bullets. He notices the man who has attacked him in jail. The man again gestures to kill Jensen. Seeing his gesture, Jensen remembers his wife's death. The killer of his wife also gestured in the same manner. Jensen believes that he could have killed his wife. Jensen tries to kill that man. But he couldn't and the race concluded. After parking his car in the garage after the race, he chases the man. There we see a deadly fight between them. When Jensen was about to kill that man, a police officer neutralizes him. Here the real story is revealed. The police officer has actually hired the man to kill Jensen's wife, Susie. In this way, Jensen is framed and brought to prison to replace Frankenstein. The race starts the next day, Jensen drives his car slowly and asks Cassie about the warden. Cassie tells him that warden is a very clever lady and she knows how to use people. She even asked her to disable Frankenstein's weapons, so that she can release her for the favor. The warden wants Frankenstein to lose the race so as to maintain the game's popularity. In this way, she could avert the release of Frankenstein. That's why she made Frankenstein die. Hearing this, Jensen gets enraged and drives his car at a high speed. Jensen heavily fires at the man who killed Susie. Jensen makes a new plan and ejects smoke in front of that man's car. Without clear visibility, that car tilts and Jensen comes out and kills him. Jensen has broken the game's rule because no prisoner is allowed to come out of his car during the race. Meanwhile, the warden sends a dangerous truck. The truck fires at the cars after reaching there. All the cars were in grave danger. Joe collaborates with Jensen to annihilate the menacing truck. They initiate the death traps and eventually destroy the truck. All were happy for destroying the truck. The race on the second day also finishes. After the race, Joe comes to meet Jensen as he considers him Frankenstein that's why he came to meet him. He discovers that Frankenstein has died long ago after hearing Jensen's voice. Later, we see the warden looking very furious. She has borne a great loss because she was working on the truck for many days. Jensen destroyed it within minutes. Now the warden gets scared and asks the police officer to kill Jensen soon. Agreeing with the warden, the police officer fixes the bomb under Jensen's car. Later the warden comes to Jensen and says I have prepared your papers and you have to win the race. Now the race for the third day starts. Cassie comes to him and tells him everything about the warden. Warden has warned her to stop Jensen's victory. The race starts and Jensen cruises his car at a high speed. He doesn't get gasoline or weapons. Joe gets everything and fires at Jensen's car. He also chases him and Jensen drives his car at high speed. Joe ejects a rocket launcher from his car but instead of hitting his car, it hits the wall. There was smoke everywhere. As the smoke subsides, they notice the cars got disappeared. They discover the cars were moving out of the jail. The warden gets worried and we come to know that both of them collaborated to escape the prison. The warden remembers that she has fixed a bomb in Jensen's car. But the coach has the bomb and he had disabled it. Now they were running from there. The police officers try to stop them by firing but they escape from there. Meanwhile, the warden sends two choppers behind them. The helicopters fire at them. Both of them get separated. Jensen jumps from his car and Cassie handles the car. She stops the car after some time and comes out wearing Frankenstein's mask. The police catch her and they think of her as Frankenstein. Elsewhere, the warden and the police officer were happy. As they feel that they have apprehended Jensen, Warden later opens a present that she received due to record-breaking ratings and finds it to be the bomb she planted on Jensen's car. Coach detonates the bomb, killing both. Jensen and Joe are shown fleeing on a freight train. 
Jensen says I have to go to my daughter first and I will meet after uniting with my daughter. Six months and 2,000 miles later, Joe and